Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. This time I will show you the sculpting and painting process of this portrait of Sun from the movie Princess Mononoke. I already prepared the background which is made of MDF and I attached the face with a screw. To sculpt everything else I'm going to use epoxy sculpt which is a two part modeling clay. After mixing you have about three hours to work with it. I measured equal amounts from each part and I will mix them with my hands as good as possible. I started by making tiny clay balls and rolled them into a teardrop shape between my fingers before I pressed them onto the background. I will begin at the bottom and work my way up. I made sure that the teardrop shapes were somewhat placed in rows. Here you can see two rows of teardrops pretty clearly. I just repeated this for the whole fur part actually. I pressed the clay into the background with my finger and I flattened the upper part with my pointy silicone tool. To be sure I had enough time left to do all the details, I decided to do only half of the fur part in my first sculpting session. I had some clay left and I just pushed it on her head. I will have to put clay there anyway, so this way I don't waste any clay and I already have a little base for her hair now. When all the pieces were in place, it was time to make this look like actual fur. At the start I had to search a bit for the right tools and techniques, but after a while I got the desired look with only two tools. I started with my tiniest ball tool to make the teardrops a bit more organic and to let them flow into each other a bit more. I'm making a lot of tiny strokes with my tool on the clay, not pressing too hard, more like scratching the surface really gently. And I'm also making some sharper edges with this metal tool. In the beginning of a sculpting session, the clay is soft and it's easy to block out the big parts. But when you try to sculpt details too soon, the clay is still a bit crumbly. I like to wait a bit before I start on those details. Mixing up some clay again for the second sculpting session. And I learned a lot from the first one and I even learned a cool magic trick look. Ta-da! A super quick way to make tiny clay balls. I wish it was true. And now let's continue with making the fur, yippee yay, yay exactly the same way. It's a repetitive process, but in the end it's a very rewarding one because I really like how the fur looks already. I'm shaping the silhouette a bit more by dividing the points in two, so it's nice and dynamic. Still using only two sculpting tools to shape all those individual pieces of fur. Sometimes it's hard to stop working on the sculpture because you can overwork something uh, by adding too much lines or details. Sometimes it's just not necessary. So done is done. And it's about time to put down your tools, Alana. Uh. Hey, done is done. Okay, let's work on the hair now. I rolled some clay worms and placed them next to the face. The shape is still very rough, I'm just looking for the right silhouette before I add the next layer of hair. Yeah, that looks alright. I already sketched out her bangs onto her forehead with a pencil, so let's fill those areas with some clay. I added some more clay until I was happy with the base shape of the hair. After that it was time for detailing. I made some lines first with my ball tool and made it nice and neat with my pointy silicone tool and a bit of water. This will smooth out the clay so nicely. I did that for the entire hair. Some lines are I made deeper than others uh, for some variety. I wanted to create a smooth texture so it would give a nice contrast with the busy looking fur behind it. Here I'm sketching out the wolf teeth and beads that Sun wears on her wolf cape, so I had a little template. Quickly sculpting the base shape of the teeth, beads and earrings. I put some clay on the top of her head already for the rest of her hair, so it could cure while I was making these tiny accessories. At this point in the curing stage, it's easier to add the line details for the hair. Beveling the teeth a bit with the flat side of my metal tool. And adding the beads. This clay requires a bit of planning, but I'm getting more and more used to working with this clay without stress. 
I'm also getting more confident to use more water with this clay. I was a bit afraid to use a lot of water, I don't know why, but yeah, it works great. I left a little gap in her hair to put in her headband. It looks like it was made very quickly, but I actually removed it twice to get the circle in the middle and to get that headband symmetrical. Oh, the magic of editing. And now the sculpting part is done. Oh, no, wait, the mask. How could I forget? I really like her full face mask. I actually made it twice in real life for my son cosplay. But I thought it didn't really fit this design, so I decided to make her half face mask. This one is also cool. I mixed up a bit too much clay and I couldn't stick it somewhere as a filler on this sculpture and I wasn't working on another one, uh, so to avoid throwing it away I make tiny balls out of the big chunk and when they are cured I can still use them as a filler in a future project. And now onto her eyelids. I use a cast of a face I model digitally and I alter the eyes with clay to give every sculpture its own character. I want to give Son a very fierce look, an expression that says, I can handle this. The eyelids are so small, so it takes some time to get it as neat as possible and symmetrical. Last touch-ups before the clay is fully set, and here we have the finished sculpture. And now my less favorite part begins. Sanding and filling and sanding and filling and sanding and filling the eyes. I try to get the eyelids as smooth as possible while I'm sculpting, but I still need some filler to make it smooth enough so you won't see the transition between the clay and the, and the casting uh, material. For the filler I'm using foam coat. I also smooth out my 3D prints with this stuff. I like to use it because it's non-toxic and it does the job really well. Sanding takes time, yes, but it's easier to sand uh, than, for example, gesso. So yeah, I like it. I work really messy with it. For me it's faster to just blob it on there and sand it down than to try to apply it very neatly in one go. <laughs> it looks a bit nasty, but I promise it will be pretty. I put on about two thin layers, sand it, put on another layer and sand it for the last time. I use a 400 grit sandpaper for this step. If you use a rougher sandpaper, so a, with a lower number, it will scrape away the foam coat rather easily. You need to be a bit gentle with it. I brush away all the sanding dust with a somewhat clean brush and voila! Still messy. <laughs> but I will fix that with paint. Which is the next step. Yay! I started with a layer of white to cover up the dark spots around the eyes. About three thin layers will do. Now I give the whole sculpture a grayscale paint job. Besides the white face, I probably didn't have to do this, but it looked cool for this work in project picture. Which is also important, right? I mix my skin colors with the primary colors. I add yellow, red, blue and some white together. When I'm not satisfied yet, I will add a bit more of one of these colors until I found my desired shade. I apply the skin color layer by layer in very thin layers. I begin with applying a dark base color for all the different parts. I start with a dark layer because sometimes it's easier to add the highlights afterwards. I will show you that later. Because Sun is the protector of the forest, I like to give her earthy tones, a lot of browns and greens, and the red is also not too bright. Okay, a little warning here. I experiment with new techniques with every project, and this time I went a little bit overboard with the skin color. In the next shot, it's way too saturated for my liking. Here I'm adding a yellow wash and dabbing it away with a bit of a damp sponge. It looks like I'm making it worse and maybe I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Just wait, okay? Next up is a red wash to imitate the blood and the veins of the skin. When these layers were dry, I dabbed on some lighter neutral colors and that actually did the trick. 
all the colors I applied earlier still shine through the lighter colors and I was pretty pleased with it. I think all the different colors together makes it a bit more realistic. Let's give the lips some attention. With a nice subtle highlight over there. And the white of the eyes, which I never paint completely white, but more a, a very light grey. I'm using a dark grey watercolor pencil to sketch out the eyeliner. As you can see here, you can make super thin lines with a watercolor pencil. Also sketching out the eyebrows with my pencil. I'm constantly looking at the face in the mirror to check the symmetry. I, I don't show that in the video, but I do. Before I go in with paints, I also sketch in the irises with the pencil first. And it also works really well to draw some individual eyebrow hairs. Some details on the lips and after that it's time for some paint again. So I kind of forgot to press the record button, but in this shot I finished the eyebrows and eyeliner with a very small brush and some acrylic paint and I added some red on her lower eyelid with a watercolor pencil. Here I'm adding some highlights in the inner corners of her eyes and fixing up the whites of the eyes to prep it for the irises. To give the eyes even more detail I draw the creases above the eyes with my pencil. I have so much more control with a pencil than a brush, so for these parts it's just perfect to use a pencil. The last details and yeah, another step done. Now to really bring the face to life I'm going to add some soft pastels. I didn't really like how she looked like uh, at this point, but man soft pastels can do so much. I'm applying the soft pastels, actually, as if I would apply some contouring makeup. Around the eyes and along the bridge of the nose. Uh, and I add a lot uh, under the cheekbones for some nice shadows. I start carefully with a small brush, but for the bigger parts I use this bigger fluffy brush. In my opinion, with these shadows it looks so much better already. I gave the face a quick layer of varnish with the airbrush to seal everything uh, what I've done until this point. Now it's also possible to build up the soft pastels more to darken up everything. Okay, let's finish the eyes. I'm not sure what eye color uh, she has in the movie, but I like green eyes and fun fact, I have green eyes myself. While that dries, let's finish the hair first. I'm all over the place while painting this one. I very gently dry brush a highlight on top of her hair. This will reveal all the nice details of the sculpture. I use just a little bit of paint for this. I gave her pretty basic but nice green eyes, not too fancy. I also sketched out the red triangles for her face paint with the watercolor pencil uh, on this point. The hair was just the beginning because now the real dry brushing fun begins. I put a very small amount of paint on my brush and I brush the surface very gently. The deepest parts stay dark and the high parts are painted. It's fast and super effective. Now that the cape finally gets its lighter color, the piece is really starting to come together. And that makes me happy and gives me more motivation to finish it. And finally adding those two cute little highlights in her eyes. I used my ball tooth for this, which I used for sculpting early in this video. And let's paint the iconic red face paint Sun has. Two very thin layers was enough. Next and final chapter, the background, which was quite an adventure on its own. Sometimes I need to see something in real life and in combination of the rest of the piece. So every color was still possible. I started with an olive color and in the end I decided to go with a very dark grayish green. 
Only thing left is to apply some varnish to give the piece a nice protective layer. This time I'm using the polyurethane varnish from Vallejo. Much stronger than the acrylic resin I used in my previous video. I applied two satin layers and ended with two matte layers. I diluted the varnish with airbrush thinner, about 50-50 of, uh, of each. And that's it! That's how I sculpted and painted the little portrait of Sun, aka Princess Mononoke. Here are the final pictures and I hope you liked it. If you have questions, suggestions or tips, please let me know in the comments down below. And for now it's goodbye again and I really hope to see you again in my next video.